Okay, hi, it's Tree. This is part four of Tree being invited into the Imperial Order of the Illuminati. Now, see, um, I would never join any of the orders because I'm not going to sell my soul to anybody. I'm not going to do anything that I don't think is right. I can't be, I can't be made or forced to do anything I don't want to do. I don't care what I will not, um, especially if I know it's wrong. Um, but, so, Master Mason told me, you know, the last time he was, I was there, he goes, okay, Trey, because he don't know how to call them, he don't, because Master Mason's not in the Imperial Order of the Illuminati, he's in many high royal orders, but he's not in that order, but I didn't know that nobody had ever been invited into that order before, and, um, until, you know, the last time I was there, within the last week, and he told, so they call him, but he doesn't have their number to call them, they call him, they've been calling him, you know, and asking him to invite me in, which he did, and then I declined, and I was re-invited. Over the past few months, over the past two months, two and a half months, I've been invited like five, four or five times, and I have de declined, and then have been re-invited, and, you know, just kind of basically doesn't um, take no for an answer. I was like, well, you know, I know, I'm not going to do, you know, and then Master Mason came back and told me, he's like, okay, I won't, be, I won't be forced or made to do anything that I don't want to do. I will not be forced to do any satanic rituals. I will not be forced to have sex with animals or children. I will not be forced to do anything I don't want to do. And I will not be, I will not be inhabited. I will not be mind controlled or brainwashed or possessed or tricked or, or any, basically um, all the rules that have always applied you know, to anybody that has ever joined into an order before. Um, I guess doesn't have to apply to me because um, um, well because I won't join the order <laughs> under those conditions you know but they the 12 judges and so now it's Drake and Pandar who by the way are Well, so that they don't become hurt because of my aura and my bad habits and stuff like that. I have a diamond ring, and that's you know a crystal that, and I have um, some other some other crystals and then a gold lion and things like that, so that they can. So they're living they living in the, the prisms in my room and in my room with me, and they can also astral travel now and go communicate with the reptilians that are the twelve judges. You know, because they can all ask for projects and communicate with each other. So, Drake and Panda are not locked or trapped in my aura. They can move around freely and stuff like that. And I are all getting things ready to be able to heal me so that I can protect the human race and protect their race and, and um, be the Earth Mother. Um, but, like I said, the, but there's reptilians like Bohemian Club, you know. I'm not necessarily members of Bohemian Girl, but I'm pretty, I, I kind of am pretty sure that most of the members of Bohemian Girl are the white. Republican guys, pretty sure that we got going to have most of them, you know, coming over uh, on our family. But the, the ones that own and then Bohemian Grove, which is the Bohemian Club in San Francisco, their phone number is 415-885-2440. I love Grove. I love Grove. <laughs> uh, uh, there's now an internal conflict. There's a war now going on inside the reptilians. Now the reptilians have divided. They've split. They're the ones, even though Elizabeth isn't here anymore, the reptilian that inhabited her. The Queen Elizabeth is, but the reptilian that inhabited her is not, so now the Queen Elizabeth now is just nothing but just she has no power and authority. Nobody's afraid of her anymore or whatever. Because she's not scary now. Because she's not the reptilian that's been inhabiting the Queen. Um, but, uh, so now there has just, you know, it just this is all happening now. So now, inside the reptilians, even though there still has always been, like, diversity, like, 10% of the reptilians won't take human life, and so they get their blood from the Red Cross, you know, and stuff like that. So there's always, you know, there's, there has been, you know, over time, the, the reptilians have started to separate within themselves anyway, because so there's, there's been the ones that want to be humane and human and that won't hurt humans, and the ones that want to have love and coexist here with us, and then there's the ones that want to destroy us. So it's been coming to this for a long time. You know, it's just coming to a head now. But now, since the queen, the reptilian has been inhabiting the queen, which is she does, is a... <laughs> I'm not going to be around. The only one that will be able to get her out will be Draken. I mean, yeah, and, and uh, if anybody breaks the crystal, guess what? She still can't get out because Draken made a whole other aura around uh, 
the crystal, a magic red, you know, he, he made play with the backups. And if anybody thinks about going to my Master Masons and trying to steal that, or get that, but you know, the one the queen, the queen is trapped in, just be warned. Bad, 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 bad luck will follow you, will unleash a curse on yourself. Um, so I'm just warning you ahead of time, you know, and plus you can't get her out, nobody can get out but Drake and, um, and there's no power there either. You can't get any power. She has, she has no power in there. So you can't, can't have the crystal ball and think you're going to get power from heaven. You're not. It's no power. Trust me. You, there, you can't get nothing from that except curses where your people you love are going to, the most horrible things, you're going to unleash a curse. Anybody that would attempt to go and steal any of my Master Mason's talismans. Okay. Just know that. Um, you know, it was interesting too because, you know, my every... Over the past year and a half, every time I go to my Master Mason's office, I've been picking up that particular, you know, the crystal with the little mirror in it, you know, and it's got like little diamonds and rubies and emeralds and sapphires in it. They're so shiny and beautiful inside. The crystal is so beautiful. And, oh, and I've just been so mystified by it and so intrigued and just like, oh, you know, just every time I go there, I always had to get, down, get it down off the shelf, you know, and we would hold it and go hold it and stuff and wrap the crystal and even chant with it sometimes and stuff, you know. Because I, I was so attached to it, but I didn't know that it was Drake and was in there. I didn't know that. Um, now I know why I felt that way. But uh, yeah, I asked Master Mason if I could have it once, and he's like, "No way," because when I first, the first year, you know, when I met Drake and stuff, he'd given me a talisman that was about this big, and it was carved out of human bones of babies that had been sacrificed. There was over a thousand babies in that talisman sacrificed, and it was over a thousand years old, and it was in mint condition, carved out of the baby's bones. And it was, I have I have pictures of it in my pictures and stuff, and if you, see, if you ever see a dragon in any of the pictures I have, that, that's what it was. But anyhow, on the Mary Magdalene day on 721, at 721, I, two years ago, I um, took it outside. 7.21 p.m. Two years ago, I took it outside, right out front here, and uh, I said, little children, hold on to me as I slay this dragon, your souls are now free. Little children, hold on to me as I slay this dragon, your souls are now free. I just repeated it, repeat. and I uh, smashed it, smashed it, and smashed it into dust. It's out there in the front, and the rocks on it, it's nothing but dust. It would have been worth well over a million dollars, just no doubt, because it was over a thousand years old, and it was in perfect mint condition. And you know what else, too, check this out, my Master Mason, um, all his talismans that he has, you know, the dragons, most of them are dragons, but on his shelf, he's had his office there for several years, and he's never, ever, 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 ever dusted them or the shelf, and there's not one drop of dust, not one drop of dust on any of those statues or talismans or, or the shelf or nothing. The whole area is, it is spick and span dust free, just like it had been completely scrubbed clean. But it's never been dusted. Now, isn't that strange? Uh, so, and also the Catholic Vatican, they're suiting up. They're suiting up to come because they don't like me either. And let me see what else. Um, so basically, um, the one that has been the imposter earth mother that has been hurting all you guys is no longer in any power position to hurt you. She's gone, tracked away. And I'm sure... Drake and well, I'm sure we'll go back for her someday, but not anytime soon. Um, uh, and not to let her out to be mean evil either, but she is Drake's daughter. Um, anyhow, uh, but so am I. <laughs> um, and so, let me see. Anyhow, so, so now I don't have to. I don't have to do anything or sell my soul or, or, or I have to do anything I don't want to in order to join them. That's already at nine minutes again. Um, so the, 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 what I'm being initiated into is um, the, well, the, the mother of the pyramid. Like Elizabeth has been at the top and then Pendar, you know, and then she knocked Pendar out and then she was hurt, but now she's gone. So now I'm being brought in. I have Pendar and Drake and all of you guys. Um, and, uh, so the only, the secrecy oath that I have to take is I have to promise, because see, I, 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 don't know, I don't know how to keep a secret yet, you know, because all this exciting stuff that happens, you know, I just bust. I had to tell somebody about it, you know, and so I could be being initiated and going to the, behind the veil and coming back out and going back and forth. There's no way. I would not, until I get myself under control, I would not be able to keep a secret. I'd be busting. I'd have to tell somebody, which means that would put their life in danger. That means the humans could all go gang up on them and attack them. 
and kill them and destroy them because at this present point in time, most of the humans are afraid of them or want them destroyed. Um, so the only thing that I have to do is I have to, well, I mean, I have to do the secret seals and I have to promise, um, you know, but I'm also going to be, I'm also going to be, well, when I come out, I'm going to look so much different so much different and, I'm, and, and once I start getting all the chemicals and the drugs out of my body and everything then I'll start to be able to I'll, you know I'll get my powers and my healing powers and I'll be able to hear and see pen out then and, and the, um, but anyhow so I accept it and I will be um, I'll be going away <laughs>